Hey, this is Chuck Marshall with Metalani, and I'm talking with John Schaefer of Iced Earth, Demons and Wizards, Sons of Liberty, and Purgatory. John, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Just finished a uh, production for uh, Jake Dreyer, the guitar player in Iced Earth, for his other band, Winterfall. I produced their new album, and we just uh, it's just killer. So I'm I'm stoked. Just literally just got back from the mix. Oh, awesome. So I just saw that video because I'm a huge fan of Witherfall. And um, yeah, I saw, I, I thought I, they had a corner picture and I thought that was you sitting there uh, at the console. So that's cool. That is awesome. Well, did they post something I'm not even aware of, but I don't you know that they were, it was going to be very, we haven't really even come out with a big press release or anything yet, but uh, you know, it's, yeah, we had a, we had a great, great time. That's I mean, a, it got delayed. It was supposed to have been finished in the middle of May, but with you know all the virus stuff, so yeah, I pushed everything back a little bit. But we just uh, we just wrapped up a stellar record. This is a it's a big step for the guys and in songwriting and production in, in all ways. So I'm really awesome. happy with it. Awesome, awesome! I can't wait to hear it. Um, so speaking of uh, you know uh, assignments, I, I got this assignment, uh, to talk with you and I'm, I'm so happy I did because I had no idea. I, I sort of missed the, the train that you had, you're starting up a, uh, publishing company called Wicked Tales and you're launching that endeavor with this, um, really great idea of this graphic novel mixed with, um, what you're calling narrative soundscapes called, uh, Wicked Words and Epic Tales. Um, I, checked out the Kickstarter, and uh, you've already quadrupled the, the project target. Uh, were, you that, were you surprised by the overwhelming um, response to the to project? Yeah, I was, man, because it, it was, I got the idea around Christmas time when we were off for a couple of weeks, and I was just, I don't know, man, sometimes these ideas come to me, and I was <laughs> hanging out, and I got, what, wait a minute, you know, what if one of my favorite songwriters was to put out a book like this, you know, I would definitely want it, you know, if it yeah. was Neil Perk or Peter Butler, or Steve Harris, whatever, Roger Waters, I mean, some of my favorite lyricists. So the idea was to do an anthology of the, of my lyrics through my whole career, you know, from, I think the first song that's in here, it was back in 1984, up until, you know, the most recent, uh, Humans and Wizards lyrics that I wrote. So awesome! It just seemed like a cool idea, and I was and the way I was envisioning it was to make it, you know, a really beautiful art book that would have tons of of artwork and a lot of something we could relate. And this is also sort of a a test into self publishing because I do, and you know, people know this and have been following the band for a long time. I want to go much deeper into the something wicked story and yep. really start telling it through graphic novels and, and maybe a monthly comic book and stuff. And that's been my plan when I got to the later to the end of my career in music, this is what I wanted to do. So yeah, um, this is sort of learning. It's a learning process and it's going to provide a, a really cool collectible thing for the, this is for the diehards, but I had no idea because it's such a, you, you know, it's a pretty unique idea. Yeah. I had no idea how many copies we should print or what the interest would be. So the uh, Kickstarter thing, came into my view and I thought, let's just give it a shot. It's right. really well. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Every day I've, I've looked at it, I mean, more and more people are, are checking into it, which I think is super cool. Um, you know, the that idea that you have of the graphic novel combined, you know, with a spoken word and the accompanying soundtrack that you've created for that narrative soundscape, um, which I, I love that term. I think that's a, a really descriptive way of, of describing that. Um but I was curious, what what is your um, what was the, how did you approach the music differently than you would like typically writing a Demons and Wizards or um, Ice Earth tune? Because it's definitely got a different feel format. Well, it was just that uh, you know when all this happened, I, I thought maybe it'd be cool to do a you know a spoken word through the lyrics, like a poetry reading. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, eh, well, no, that's not really creative enough. So then I just had the idea to do, to grab sections of whatever songs uh, that I was going to be reading yeah. and sort of orchestrate them a little bit. And so when I told Jim about this idea, Jim Morris, yeah, um, he's the one that did the MIDI programming up here in my studio. And of course I was giving him direction and we were going through and kind of 
which parts would be the coolest for this song, and we just turned it into, you know, different string arrangements or keyboard pads or whatever, and I played some guitar on it, and we did some vocal stuff, but very subtle. Yeah. And it just, you know, drum, uh, like MIDI drumming with, like, world drums and different sounds and shit, and it just became an atmospheric pad to speak over that would, you know, harken back to the original in some degree. Now, Wolf is not. That's a... Uh, that's a completely different piece. I actually found that it was something that I had demoed years ago. And oh. I found it on a hard drive, and I'm like, man, this is pretty cool. <laughs> and, creepy. and I said, you know, Jim, let me just read Wolf over this. Just hit record, and it was boom, one take. Awesome. Went so, pretty cool, and, it, and it's just a fun one. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. A, just, it's, it's just a different idea, man. I thought it would be something that would, uh, would accompany the book. Now, the backstory to this is, my friend Sa uh, Pear from Sabaton, oh, yeah. several years ago, they asked me to do a spoken uh, narrative thing on, uh, I think their album is called The Last Stand. And we, uh, so we, I did that for them, and they always like when I do that shit in my surf, when I do like spoken bridges or whatever. So they yeah. asked me to do one for the record, and I, I did it. And then afterwards, the guys were totally into it, and uh -huh. Pear said, man, you really ought to start using your voice for like, movies or video games or something yeah it really sounds cool and i was like well that i'm just happy <laughs> if you're happy that's what i did for you and, but i think that kind of planted the seed that you know it, it must have at some point that was like three four maybe even five years ago uh -huh. when we had that discussion so i don't know i i credited him with it so i called him and told him hey dude this is i got this crazy thing <laughs> and, uh, thank you for planting the seeds on it so that's cool but yeah, that's, that's kind of how it, it just happened, man. And it's a, the, I've been reconnected with some artists that I worked with years ago, and I'm, I've met all kinds of new artists um, and looking for people to, to do different drawings and paintings and stuff for the book. And so, you know, it's it's just a very, very high end. I mean, I think it's going to end up being over 250 pages. We're actually, now that I'm back from this production, and we're getting closer to ending the campaign. We're getting ready to paginate. And, you know, I've said in there that it's going to be over 200 pages, but because there's still a few pieces of art due and we haven't begun the actual layout, uh -huh. everything's done. You know, the graphics are done, the artwork's done, except for, for one piece. Um, and some comments coming from other colleagues and stuff, but we're getting close. Now we start paginating, it's going to tell me exactly how many pages. But I, from the way it looks and discussing it with Roy yesterday, I think we're well over. 250 pages and it's going to be a eight and a half by 11 coffee table style you know yeah hard cover with a slip case you know, really high end very very high end nice yeah that's a good segue because i was uh you know the, the sneak peeks you've had of the artwork look amazing um you got the different covers from john boy myers and um, jim ballant and roy young um, I, I saw that you also have like um, some art being contributed from Todd McFarlane and Danny Mickey, um, who are you know awesome uh, comic artists. Um, so I was curious when you were engaging. Yeah, guys, yeah go ahead. But, but hang on, by putting by putting those guys on there, it's really because there's going to be I surf album covers in there. So oh, all right, cool. Not, a, a lot of the artists created new pieces, but not those two guys particularly. But okay. they are going to have their art in the book. Awesome. So um, we know. Yeah, and I was curious when. So for for the other art that you're going to have in the book, um, and you're engaging these artists to to draw, are you, um, you know, did you do they you, you gave them did you give them the the list of um, songs and you know lyrics to to pick from, or did you say you know hey I'd like you to work on this song, and this is the idea I had. Um, it wasn't necessarily about songs in particular. In fact, I'm. I'm bringing in uh, uh, two new characters from the Something Wicked universe um, for that, are just, that haven't even been written about yet. Oh. There was going to be three, but we ran into a time jam with getting uh, another one of the characters drawn up in time before I had to really close this because of you know, going into Winterfall production and everything. And right. So um, the Swabbing, which are on the Jim Fallon um, book cover, they're they have not been written about lyrically before. That was just something that I that has been in my plan for a, a long time, and I just wanted to be shown to make it kind of a to unique to make this book release unique, and to have you know 
people get more peeks into other characters in the story. And Queen Jezebel is also a new character. I mean, new to the people. Right. That hasn't been written about. And that, that's uh, Monkey Moore did the first image of her. And then uh, Jamie Tindall did one with Seth and Jezebel together. So but most of it was really about, like, different artist takes on set. Okay. And then there's a really cool Stormwriter piece by Tim Vigil. Um, it's just it's a battle scene, basically. And so, you know, I mean, there's, it, it's not necessarily, it's more about what the lyrics inspired in terms of the Something Wicked story and, and various takes on set. It must, you just have to see it, man. It's going to have <laughs> a lot of classic Iceberg artwork. Yeah. And then, and demons and everything. And then it's going to have a whole lot of new pieces and different takes different by, by different artists, which is really cool because, you know, I'll give them direction. Uh, sometimes I get very specific with the direction of what I want the image to look like. And sometimes, depending on the artist, I just let them fly. You know, oh. And what we're going to do. Because, like, for instance, Lucio Perillo, he did a really killer version of set. Never, he's never been painted like that. That guy had a style more like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> kind of presented, but I'd say uh -huh. more Boris. Okay. It's a painted style. Really, really, really cool detail. And I just wanted to to see what he would do. I said, just 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 paint him, you know, yeah. do it. And do what feels natural to you because we may do future work together. Uh -huh. And I want to see what his initial instincts are. So I had to make a couple adjustments at the end, but I just let him run with it. And uh, so it's different based on the content. And I think there's probably at least 20 pieces of art in here that are, you know, people I haven't seen before. Awesome. So That sounds great. Yeah, I mean, I'm... I'm it, just the artwork alone sounds, you know, fantastic. And then you know, having the, the spoken word with it to you know, enjoy both at the same time. That's that's going to be cool. Um, another yeah, it's different, man. It's a different way. And even the even the lyric pages look really classic because everything's you know full color. So it's like a you know there's there's a there's a certain design to the ice earth part. There's a certain design to the demons and wizards part, and some of the liberty and purgatory. They've all got their own colors and their own borders, and it's just it really is a it's pretty awesome. Another cool feature, I think, that as far as what you've been doing for sneak peeks um, for the Kickstarter, is those videos where you've got you know uh, kind of showcasing the narrative soundscapes. Them in themselves seem like another dimension to the overall project. Do you think that you'll continue to do more of those types of videos to accompany the book? Um, well, we've only done, we did three, and I believe, you know, honestly, man, my assistant has been running this campaign because I've been in the studio 16, 17 hours a day. So I, we had seen three, I believe, before I started the Windfall production, and I don't know, honestly, I don't know if they're all out. I literally just got back yesterday and I'm trying to get my bearings straight. I got a full press day today and then it's time to, you know, focus on some other, other productions that are right around the corner here. But I, um, that's, so I don't know what has been released, but I don't plan on doing any more of those styles, but there will be some updates. And now, you know, when I get my bearings straight after all of this, I'm going to be able to, uh, you know, consult with my assistants and go on the site and figure out where you're at where we're at and then you know i'll do some just some cell phone updates cool awesome um the but yeah we did we did three we did one just as an introduction to yep project then we did one that's focused on the audio and then there was one that's focused on the the art and i think they've all been out now i'm not sure about that yeah the last one i saw was wolf um so yeah there was a production for the for wolf with you speaking and then oh if you're talking about if you're talking about the lyric video yeah yeah then uh, oh okay sorry man i thought you were talking about the, the kickstarter oh no sorry video. yeah no uh -uh. sorry okay no but okay so yeah there's three of, there's three of those and wolf and dracula are out and we have one more that we're gonna save until um after the campaign's done uh -huh. and once we we're working on distribution for the book for also for after this initial part is done and if we can come up come to terms with somebody and there's a lot of people that aren't aware of kickstarter and they aren't and the shipping costs are pretty brutal when it means mean yeah. going to europe and stuff so yeah we know we're looking at an international situation to be able to satisfy the fans outside of the u.s and canada that want to get the book 
Um, there are some people that definitely are ordering it from other countries, but they're having to pay an awful lot for shipping and for you know, import duties and all that. So we're trying to come up with another solution to put out, you know, maybe another five hundred or a thousand copies into the international scene. Awesome. And, uh, it, you know, if that happens, then there'll be another video promoting it. Cool. Uh, the uh, the packages I've seen, uh, you know, on the Kickstarter. Uh, include some kind of cool, unique items, you know, so somebody doesn't, if they don't want the book, I don't know why they wouldn't, but, um, you know, you've got this enamel pin set, and the, the thing that really intrigued me was these metal trading cards. Um, they're actually cut out of sheet metal. Uh, that sounds so awesome. Uh, so uh, who, who came up with that idea? That is, uh, I love that. You know, I saw those at the, I was at the Comic-Con in Chicago, I think it was late February, early March, uh -huh. um, to do a signing for the new Demons of Wizards album. And I hadn't been to a con in a while, and it was just killer, so massive, and there's so so many talented people and great ideas. And that's the, the beauty of those comic conventions, because you can really, like this concept that I came up with, Yeah. That I, I mean, I haven't seen it before. Maybe somebody's done it, but I've never seen it before. And that's a perfect place to promote something like that. So yeah. there was... So a few vendors there were selling these really badass metal printed posters and, you know, it, it just striking looking, you know. So I started talking to them and I got the contact with the company that makes them there out in Vegas. And so we, we got in touch and that was, it was just the idea of trading cards. Now we also at some point want to do like a full set of album covers. With oh. this because it has a really I don't know if you saw the video there was a video update posted on Kickstarter with the metal cards to show the sheen and stuff but when you when you see like the, the guys that we samples of different ice surf album covers and uh, and they even have some sizes that are like 11 by 17 I think is as big as they go uh -huh. but, but when, you, when you see it it just has a really badass look it's, but yeah the, the metal thing the metal cards are really cool and they they do all kinds of stuff. We'll be doing a lot of uh, business with that company in the future. Cool. So I I know you hinted at the fact that um, uh, Wicked Tales. This is pretty much your um, you know getting your feet wet in the in the publishing area. Um, have you thought about what other projects you're you're thinking of doing after this book? And and I know that's probably far out in the future because you got a lot of work still to do here. But well, the, as far as um, Wicked Tales goes, that's uh, going to be a little while before I before I pick it up. I want to see how this does, and then it's like also a time issue, man, because, you know, depending on, I've got a few music, very special music projects that are going to be coming real soon to Kickstarter also, okay. because I think this, you know, we're going we're gonna to be doing this from now on, I think, rather than signing with a record company. We've got a couple things that we want to test with it, but it just allows so much more artistic freedom, and nowadays... You know, we can, we can just, it, it's just going to basically cut out some of the middlemen yep. and it's better, which is obviously better for the band. And yeah. that's the thing that I like about this format or formats like this. And we're in a position now to where we can test it. The book being the first test mm -hmm. at another very special project coming uh, very soon, actually. And that'll be another test. And then we'll just, after, after a couple of these things, um, get released and we see how it all works out I think that's probably the way of, of the future um, for us going forward but it's you know there's the thing is for Wicked Tales is really going to be the, uh, the anchor of that is going to be something Wicked Story so that'll be uh, certainly a, going into a graphic novel and I also have some pretty cool subject ideas for that when, when the time comes but to be honest with you, man, until we know what happens in the world, like, I can't, I'm a little bit paralyzed from starting any ice earth planning because we yeah. have international guys in the band, and right now, uh, everything is so fucked, there's no yeah. point in us trying to make plans. Um, so we're, you know, we're in a, in a holding pattern at the moment, and that's actually fine because once this next production I'm done with uh, is, is finished, I'm, and once I'm done with that next production, I'm going to definitely be taking hiatus for a little while because I've been going in really hard for the last few years. And uh, so, you know, a break is uh, is a welcome thing, and we'll see where things go in the world. But when I get into the point of 
really going for the something wicked story <clears throat> in graphic novels and gaming and everything we're talking about, you know, it will become the thing and I won't be able to, to handle that and I sort of, so that's going to be, you know, more after I wind the band down. Right. And that'll be when I really focus on more uh, releases with storytelling. But, you know, the Night and Stormwriter story will certainly be there. Um, and it actually does have a connection to the whole Something Wicked universe and, you know, Dante's Inferno would be a fun one to make a graphic novel out of. Yeah. And, um, Dark Side of Her Majesty, from that I, that I wrote those lyrics on the last Demons and Wizards record, that is also a, a really killer horror story. It would be great for a graphic novel. So those are the kind of things that I want to get into um, as we uh, as we go forward. Excellent. Well, John, um, you know, I, I wish you the greatest success. I mean, this is going to obviously is huge, and I can't wait to see it. Um, I hope you and your family are well and safe, and I thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Hey, it's my pleasure, Chuck. Thank you, man. You take care of yourself. All right, you too.